I edited four different episodes in the same series using four different editing programs. So welcome to the Premiere Pro versus Avid Media Composer versus DaVinci Resolve versus Final Cut Pro 10 Battle Royale. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's get into it. So I've been a professional video editor since 2017 and I've edited everything from promos to music videos to short films to live events and in all that time I've mostly used Adobe Premiere Pro. And just to be super transparent about all of my experiences, before this I've only used DaVinci for color correction and I'm not the best colorist. I used Avid in third year of film school and I've only used Final Cut Pro 10 once when I got my first MacBook back in 2014 and I hated it. Like, I hated it. And I swore that I would never use it again, thus beginning a lifelong feud with anybody who dare speak its name. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Or am I? No, I am, I am. Or am I? And I know what you're gonna say, ugh, just another Premiere fanboy. And you'd be correct. But seeing as this video somehow became the most viewed video on this channel, I decided that I wanted to give all these programs another try. And when we started our new series on the page, which, you know, you can go watch over there, I saw this as the golden opportunity to do just that. Since it's a series, there would be specific stylistic elements in the presentation of each episode that would create the battleground for these programs to either outshine one another or lag behind and die outside the zone. I can't keep this metaphor going. We're comparing editing programs. Let's go. So starting with importing your files. All these programs allow you to straight up edit the raw H.264 footage, but Avid and Final Cut work better when you transcode to either DNX or ProRes. I didn't transcode the footage in Avid, which was probably a mistake, I know. But I did leave background rendering on in Final Cut because all those channels always talk about how much quicker it is when you do that. And I wanted to test it out. Also, Final Cut Pro copies all of your footage into its library, so it just creates duplicates of everything. And if you do transcode, it sort of makes three copies of everything, so. When we move to project management, Final Cut has this weird structure of libraries and events instead of bins like all the other programs. In Final Cut, when you open an event, which is a bin, you see a thumbnail view of all your footage, which I guess is nice if you have a ton of like 10 second or even a minute long clips. But if you have 30 minute clips like us, it's a bit of a nightmare. So I use the list view throughout. But in the list view, every time you import footage into that, it creates a new folder with the date that those clips were shot on. And sometimes the metadata is wrong, so it just puts different cameras in different folders within the event, which is kind of annoying, especially because the MacBook screen is really small. In Premiere and DaVinci, you can just make a bin and then create bins inside of bins for easy organization. In Avid, you can put bins inside folders, but not bins in bins. So we like to use multicam to sync our footage and just easily select the angle that we want. And the way that I do this in Premiere is just to use the auto audio sync. So this was fairly easy in all the programs. All of them have a sort of a similar waveform audio sync type thing. Premiere and DaVinci handled the process pretty similarly, but the results are sort of too erratic to draw any conclusions. Avid sort of just syncs things when there's a clap, so it would end up with like five clips of Mark just stacked on top of one another and then synced to the clap, ignoring everything else in the waveform, so. And then Final Cut Pro 10 would take ages to do this. Like I'm talking an hour and a half, but when it's done, it's pretty much spot on. So before I actually started editing, I changed all the shortcuts to what I was used to in Premiere. This was fairly easy in all the programs, but every program sort of has its own name for the same tool, so. Though DaVinci has a Premiere shortcut preset, it really leaves a lot to be desired. Anyways, if you are switching to one of these programs, I've left a little link in the description for you to download all of my presets for these programs, uh, just for free, just mahala. Oh, and if you like me giving away free stuff, press that subscribe button. Maybe I'll do another thing. 
So when it comes to actually editing and just cutting up the footage, the multicam and all these programs work really well. You can preview all four angles and then just click on the one that you want and it automatically makes a cut as you going. But in Premiere, when playback is paused, you can actually just switch to a different angle. None of the other programs do this. They always make a cut every time you click on it, meaning that you have to go to the beginning of the clip in order to change the angle. The magnetic timeline of Final Cut Pro 10 took quite a bit of getting used to, but after a couple of days, I got the hang of it pretty quick and it's not that bad, really. Now we know Avid is an editor and only an editor. It's made for long form TV and film where there's different departments all using their own software and then bringing it back into Avid. And that workflow probably works really well. Avid is not made for YouTube. It's actually pretty bad in YouTube. And this becomes very apparent when we start talking about graphics, effects, and text. Any properties such as scale, position, and so on need to be applied from an effect in the effect palette. And once this is applied, it kind of slows down playback a little bit. You know what is good for YouTube though? Pressing that little like button right there. <laughs> Sorry, anyways. DaVinci and Final Cut have very similar default property inspectors with things like crop added in addition to the standard position, rotation, and opacity that we have in Premiere. Graphic animation using keyframes is easiest in Premiere where you can just see the keyframes next to each property. Avid does this very similarly, but with like a sprinkle of difficulty added. If you have to get to the actual keyframes itself in Final Cut or DaVinci, you have to open this like sub menu on the timeline to make changes or just use the inspector like I did. Okay, and I have to mention dynamic linking from Premiere to After Effects, which is just the best thing. Plus with motion graphics in Premiere, you can actually do some really impressive stuff. Text in Premiere and Avid is pretty similar. You just click and then change your properties, Avid having that sprinkle of difficulty again. While in DaVinci and a Final Cut, you have to drag in the template with the animations already applied before you edit anything. Okay, moving on to color, obviously DaVinci is the best. It was made for color before it was an editor and before it was an audio program and an effects program. Before all of those things, DaVinci was made for color and it does it really good. So if you really wanna dial in those color settings, DaVinci is your program. But for the rest of us who maybe have limited color experience, Lumetri in Premiere Pro is next. Even when just using the basic color correction sliders, you get a ton of control. Final Cut is third and I couldn't get Avid to work as advertised. I don't know if I was supposed to apply an effect or something, but the color workspace just didn't work for me. I probably did something wrong. As I said, I'm not a color expert, so take that for what it is. I might not be an expert in color, but I do know about audio and audio will just always work better in tracks. It's just so much easier to apply plugins to an entire track instead of to individual clips. And this is where Final Cut fails. Even when you sort your audio by lanes, you can't apply effects to that entire lane, which come on Apple. Avid actually has a leg up in this one since it uses the same default audio plugins as Pro Tools because it's made by the same company. One odd thing though, is that you have to specify when a clip is stereo. By default, it just imports the stereo track as two mono tracks and then you just lose all the panning. But you can fix this, it's just a bit of extra clicking and I don't know why it happens. Now, I didn't really like Fairlight in DaVinci all that much. It doesn't make sense to me while you would have a window for audio and then not be able to edit any of the audio. When I'm in the zone for audio and I think of a sound effect, I wanna be able to just drag that sound effect straight in without having to go back to the edit tab, put in the clip, then go back to Fairlight and then mix that clip. Similarly to the stereo woes in Avid, DaVinci seems to hate mono clips. When I put a piece of mono audio on the timeline, it only plays through the left channel and I have to go to Fairlight, create a new mono channel, move it out of the stereo channel and I just don't understand why this happens. Premiere is actually pretty powerful when it comes to audio. Its audio plugins though could use a little bit of work especially its EQ plugins. I only really used compression from all of the default plugins as I like to use FabFilter for EQ and Isotope RX7 and Accusonus Era 4 for noise reduction. But the compressors in each program were pretty good. Now for arguably the most important part of the process and I feel like the most overlooked part of the process, exporting. You're probably thinking I'm gonna do some kind of speed test, but no, I'm not. There's enough people who do that. I'm talking about this because Avid wouldn't let me export my video. That's a good YouTube title right there, isn't it? 
Anyways, it would get to the part where I resized Mark when he's explaining the script and it would just crash over and over and over and over. And this was the night before upload. It was hell. I ended up removing all the effects from every clip and then exported it twice with the different layers and then just put everything back together in Premiere. I know technically I didn't finish that video on Avid and I don't even care. It just refused. It's probably because I didn't transcode my footage. I know, I know, I'm sorry. The other programs worked really well, no issues. I didn't really notice any sort of speed improvement in Final Cut. I'm sure it was like a minute or two faster. I guess in the long run, a minute here and a minute there, it just adds up to two minutes and then eventually an hour. I couldn't be bothered. Okay, so now how much do these programs cost? Nothing beats free, so obviously DaVinci wins here hands down. And even the studio license is only $299. And then after that, you get free updates forever. That's cool. Same with Final Cut. Premiere and Avid are subscription based. Avid costs $24 per month, excluding that. And if you just get Premiere, it's also around $24. But this is where CC really shines. For $60 a month, you get access to all of their programs. All of them. All of, there's a lot. There's like a lot of programs there. And you even get access to Portfolio, which lets you design your own website for free. Now, Avid does offer a one-time perpetual license in addition to your monthly subscription. So if you do decide to cancel that monthly payment, you get to keep the program minus any future updates. And when it comes to trials, Final Cut Pro offers 90 days of free use, which is, that's a lot. That's also the one that I used. Avid has a 30 day free trial, which is also what I used. We already had a studio license for DaVinci, so I just used the studio license. And then Premiere also has a 30 day trial, but I already own it, so. Okay, so who won? Well, no one really won, but I think Avid lost. Boo, boo. You're stuck, but again, Avid is not made for YouTube. It has a ton of functionality outside of what I used it for. Plus I heard it's really stable when you're editing really long episodes or films or whatever. But please just don't use Avid if you're only gonna be using it for YouTube. It's not made for YouTube. If you wanna be an editor in Hollywood, then learn absolutely everything that you can about Avid. It's the industry standard over there. In South Africa, learn Premiere. It's what we use for TV and film and YouTube and just everything. So am I switching? No, I'm staying with Premiere. But if Premiere suddenly stopped working or disappeared off the face of the earth, which one do you think I should use? Let me know in the comments. The most important thing is that you don't quit editing just because you don't understand the program. Just use something else, who cares? Just don't quit, please, just never quit. So that's it for our very brief overview of all these programs. If you would like to see me take an in-depth look at each program individually, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'll take a look at it. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And while you're down there, just next to the like button, there's a red button, it's called subscribe. And then when you're done there, just click on the bell. And then you'll be notified every time we upload a new video, which is every Tuesday and every Friday with a new short film on the first Friday of every month. So until next time, stay inside, make your movie.